the Song of Russian Jack by Wild Geese, who are a, a Carterton Masterton band um, with Brendan Connor, Michael Jew, Neil Francis, Mick Ludden, Paul Turner, um, Gillian McLeod, Bridget Connor, Siobhan Connor, and uh, Gillian McLeod on backing vocals, and Toby Mills on keyboard and pianos. And it's a lovely song celebrating Russian Jack. And I know someone who remembers um, him visiting their farm when um, this person was a little boy, obviously, because Russian Jack died in 1968. But he said that what struck him about Russian Jack was he wouldn't just take for an, an, a meal for nothing. He always wanted to do something in return for... Um, uh, for a meal and um, this chap's grandmother told him that Russian Jack was the best person to do things like mend the pots and the odd jobs around the house that was re they were really useful so though he was free he was responsible about it and made sure that he um, that he repaid whatever he got um, so it's a lovely story about Russian Jack and for those of you watching on TV I've actually put um, up a photograph of our Rothman hut because I'm sure Russian Jack would have come across a number of Rothman's huts and this is the one at Cobblestones. It's a lovely little hut which of course moved. So it was a kind of a bit like a caravan. So it would get moved from place to place while the roadman who lived in the hut would... Um, repair the roads because getting around the Wairarapa it was really important to have the roads repaired so we had these a number of roadsman's huts this one's in really good condition because it's been conserved and it gets painted regularly and well looked after but um, and you can actually go inside it and see how the roadsman lived. And I'm sure Rush and Jack often had a chat with roadsman or they'd share a meal or whatever. Um, with I was talking earlier about cobblestones coming alive. And on our high days and holidays, we often have our own Russian Jack walking around cobblestones with his swag bag and his stick and, and you can stop and chat to him. He also sometimes has a a, a little we make a, a little camp for him so he you can sit down and talk to him about how people on the road lived in the um, early part of the 20th century so it's quite fun to do so it's quite fun to um, have a chat with him he's a lovely chap his real name is Nathan Roseman and he's an actor which um, is we're really lucky to have him do that and he's um and he's very good at it as well um the other buildings that we have apart from the hospital and the roadman hut is we also have a wool shed which of course came originally from masterton and it's well worth looking at because it's one of the oldest wool sheds in the Wairarapa. we were so lucky to be given it and we have done a, a, an extensive conservation on it to make sure that it's going to be okay for the next hundred odd years. We also have our cottage, which is an original cottage in um, was built in Greytown, and it was moved onto the site. Um, it was donated by a local lady called Stella Bull, and so grateful to have this lovely cottage. And it's got um, it's got two bedrooms upstairs, and it's got a main bedroom, a parlour complete with piano downstairs, a kitchen, and uh, a small bedroom at the back of the house, which we're not sure if it was a bedroom or a storeroom. But someone told me that one time there was ten children as well as the parents living in this cottage, so it might have been a bit of a Squash, I think. Um, definitely a tiny house. Um, 
So as we go back to having tiny houses being popular, then it's worth coming to have a look and see how, how much a family managed to squash into one tiny house. When we also try to make history come alive by actually using machinery that's at cobblestones. And we're very lucky in that we have a fantastic volunteer called Tony King, who is um, has taught himself, after he retired, he taught himself all about printing in the old-fashioned way. And often on weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays, you afternoons, you find Tony in the print shop actually printing. And you can come along and he'll show you how the old-fashioned printing presses work. And it's, he's really, really good at it. He's so knowledgeable. And he'll show you how the type was set up and why different kinds of type were used. So it's really good to see something come alive like that. Um, and it's... It, in the, um, in the way of New Zealand, where lots of people are very independent, I've noticed since I've come here, and um, there was once upon a time in, Grey, in Greytown a newspaper, and uh, it was run by a chap called Frank Fife. And I understand that sometimes some of the letters to the editor would be quite um, controversial, so, and often the letters to the editor would actually be written from both points of view by the same person to try and get some conversation going. I really like that idea. And um, I'm going to play you a song now called Rugby, Racing and Beer. I'm, as I've said before, I'm married to a true New Zealander, fifth generation, and he is an absolute rugby fanatic. We were watching the Wales versus All Black game last night, which was very exciting. And he will not miss a game. So I have to keep on top of how we manage to view all the rugby games. That's my job. And he told me about when he was a little kid, he used to play for a rugby team called the Pirates in Tokoroa. So this is a song about rugby, racing and beer, a good New Zealand, how to be a good New Zealander. Rugby, racing and, rugby, racing and, rugby, racing and beer. When I was just a little shaver, knee hard to a chair, my daddy sat me down upon his knee. While he drained his glass and closed his eyes and offered me some good advice on how to be a real Kiwi. On how to pick the second leg, on how to tap a brewery keg, says he my boy you needn't have a fear. Because of your great parentage, you've got a natural heritage of rugby racing and beer. Alright, rugby racing and beer, rugby racing and beer. Down under that bad over that rugby racing and beer. Well, Uncle Charlie went to see the doctor yesterday. Says he, Doc, you gotta help me quick. I'm seeing footballs in my eyes, pink horses twice their size, and every Monday morning I feel sick. Well, the doctor took one look at him, says, Charlie, things are grim. No room for complacency, I fear. But to make that will tonight, you've contracted Kiwiitis with your rugby racing and beer. All right. Rugby racing and beer. Rugby racing and beer. Down under there, mad over there. Rugby racing and beer. Take it down there, team. One night when all the world was dead, I woke up startled in my bed. Somebody was creeping down the hall. Well, I closed my eyes, I count to ten, but there it was, that noise again. A burglar must be paying us a call. 
Well, I said, who's that? A voice says me, it's Uncle Charlie wants some tea. It's only my transistor, you can hear. These evening races give me hell. I've got the night trot now as well as rugby racing and beer. Rugby racing and beer. Rugby racing and beer. Down under the mat over there. Rugby racing and beer. Are you ready there, Shirl? Oh, I'm ready. I'm waiting. You ready there, Shirl? Yes. Well, Jimmy wants a country boy, very shy, very coy. You know the kind I mean, through and through. At a local dance, he met this girl. He thought he'd give this bird a bill, but where to start? He didn't have a clue. While he parks the car, she looks at him and cuddles up and whispers, Jim. Tell me those three words I want to hear. Well, he looked at her with some surprise and said with love light in his eyes, Rugby racing and beer. All right. Rugby racing and beer. Rugby racing and beer. Down under the mat over there Rugby racing and rugby racing and rugby racing and beer Rugby racing and beer um, That was a track on a, by Gumboot Tango It was originally written by someone called Rod Derrant um, Who I don't know actually But I just think it's rugby racing and beer It's such a New Zealand theme And um, I'm just want, going to go back to cobblestones And about how we're trying to make sure that history comes alive And one of the things that we're doing is we have a, a woodworker who comes in and does woodworking lessons for children. And he gets the kids making um, wooden toys. And it's just delightful because he uses all, he doesn't use power tools. He shows them how to use tools so they learn how to do woodworking the old fashioned way. And it's just delightful to see the joy on the kids' faces when at the end of an hour or a one and a half hour lesson they've got this completed wooden toy that they made themselves, whether it's a, a car, a bus, a boat, a robot, a camera, whatever it is, they really, really enjoy it. So we have our woodworking, we have Russian Jack on high days and holidays, some of the rest of us trying to make sure that cobblestones comes alive so keep an eye on our facebook page and keep an eye on our new website for one of those days and come along and visit us and um and tell me what you think of this radio show because i'd really like to hear from from you what you know what do you want to hear about with cobblestones what is what's interesting to you so have a good couple of weeks and I'll be back in two weeks' time with some more Cobblestones Chronicles. Thank you very much for listening. Bye. <laughs>